Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. Welcome to the Think Big with Dan and Kasim today. Our guest is Asal. Asal, how are you today? I'm doing well, Kasim. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, likewise, thank you. So uh, let us know where you live and what you do. Um, so again, I'm Russell Kareem. I currently live in, in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, my company uh, called Dakai, uh, we build the first operating system uh, designed for promotional and uniform sourcing industry. So think of all the Fortune, you know, 5,000 companies, they're buying millions of product for uniforms, for their events and employee retentions, all different reasons. So currently, they actually work with, uh, we call this promotional product distributors to really procure their products. So we built a technology platform uh, for these promotional uh, product distributors to get their products sourced from around the world. So that's really what I do uh, for my day to day. And excited to kind of chat with you further. Awesome. So from where you got the inspiration of this business? Um, so for, you know, inspiration is really kind of my background. I, I grew up at a, you know, clothing manufacturing, you know, I grew up in Bangladesh at a clothing factory. Uh, growing up, you know, I have seen pretty much all the pinpoints as a manufacturer. And we worked with some of the largest brands. Uh, the other side, you know, coming into the US, I have seen all those larger brands brands and corporation, they're also struggling when it's come to finding the right manufacturing partners. To really kind of solve this, you know, situation, uh, I, I built DACA. I, I wanted to build this technology that enables pretty much for the brand side and the you know manufacturing side to be easily connected, communicating and everything in between. And that's that's really uh, how the inspiration came about. Makes sense. So uh, what is the gap that you found in this in this industry and you are filling it with it with, with your business? Absolutely. So the, you know there are a few a few gaps here. Uh, so Kasim, you know if you think about larger company, let's say when uh, McDonald's and Starbucks, uh, they are they are buying millions of polo shirts for their employees. They cannot just go out there and buy from a sweatshop uh, in you know some certain countries. They really need to understand exactly where the products are coming from, how these products are made, and does these products aligns with their, uh, you know, company ESG uh, responsibility that they have. So this is really actually one of the big, uh, you know, big issue and big gap I see that in this promotional product industry, there are very little transparency and visibility into this industry. And right now, we we see that there are at least three to five middlemen in between this, you know, this promotional product distributors and the manufacturers. And that's that's huge. And because of this, all the smaller middlemen in between, this promotional product costs at least 30% more than the usual cost of making, right? Or the cost of you go directly source to the factories. So, you know, taking those, you know, gaps, uh, we built a technology platform, which is Dakai.com. Uh, what, what that does is in the one side, we're bringing promotional product distributors. We're vetting and verifying and bringing into our platform. The second thing we're doing in the other side is uh, we're going out around the world, finding some of the best manufacturers that produce promotional products uh, that focus and in a smaller quantity, uh, some of the highest quality with some of the best compliance uh, that they have, bring them into the same platform, allowing these distributors to find them easily. So on the distributors, they're like, hey, I'm looking for 500 hats uh, and I need to have BSCS certificates. I need to have this kind of ethical compliances and all this. Then based on those flags, we have factory that can provide bid on those projects. From there, they can communicate, negotiate, pray for the service, initiate a production, track from their sampling to their product gets to the warehouse, all done to that technology. So that's that's really kind of one side of the problem that we have we have solved. And Kasim, I might be actually speaking a lot more because this problem, this is one of the most legacy industry that hasn't changed forever. And I mean, I'm, I'm really excited that I get to work on this uh, problem uh, the second sets of the problem that I'm solving right now, which is these promotional product distributors, 
their biggest business killer is, which I don't know if I'm able to share, <laughs> is think of like Vistaprint, Customing. They're the biggest, you know, business killer yeah. for the smaller promotional product distributor. Yeah. Uh, so what we have done is that, hey, your local, uh, you know, distributors or promotional product distributors that you have in your local market, they don't have as beautiful website, as configurable website like, you know, Vistaprint and Customing. Uh, so we built a turnkey technology that can transform any legacy website into Vistaprint superior experience on those smaller guys. And that's really, so we're bringing this same power, same kind of capabilities for the customization and design capabilities uh, for everybody. So that's really, you know, recent product that we have launched, but we not only have done that, we also have curated factories around the world that can ship those products within weeks. So we're really changing how this industry works. Yeah, these are, I think, uh, these are things that sets you really apart from the market. So this is really interesting. And uh, it was important to share these things, I believe, uh, so that uh, viewers can also know, like, these are most important areas uh, that encourage you to do or to, to, to build these build these products and uh, do this business. But, and this completely makes sense for me. So what is the biggest challenge you have faced? Uh, in, in fact, what is the biggest challenge that you are facing at this time? Make it simple. Um, so, I mean, you know, the biggest challenge, what I have faced before and uh, facing now is a little different, right? Uh, I think, you okay. know, when you're building this company, you go through a bunch of pivots, iteration, and really getting to the right, perfect market, right? Like you really oh, yes. understand, okay, this is exactly the problem you're solving for. This is who you are solving this problem for and this is why they're willing to pay uh, for your service, right? Um, currently, yeah. the biggest challenge that we are facing is we're launching all this technology. Now it's really <laughs> pushing those technology to really get into the market. I think that's really the biggest challenge. Uh, and I think we wanted to build a product that is kind of the product led go because people love our product so much and they really recommend mm -hmm. to their other friends and the family and think about, you know, we're sharing about this product today in this podcast and that's really how we're spreading. So we're not really spending any dollar in our marketing. All of our growth is mm -hmm. based on really the current product led growth. Like, People are seeing other people and that's really how they hear about us. And I think we're kind of at a stage of now looking like, okay, how do you use other tools and marketing, you know, strategies to really grow that? And that's really what we're going to be looking into uh, in the next uh, few quarters. So that's kind of one of the challenge, but I think we will figure it out as we go. When you're talking about the marketing, I think like this is a strange thing for me that you are not spending a dollar on, on marketing because uh, I believe every, every business is struggling in the in the in the uh, marketing phase and uh, marketing is something really special for everybody and you are just work, go, going on on the word of mouth so yeah absolutely yeah i mean for us is really as i said we're not spending any money and that's uh, <laughs> something we haven't done uh, and it's been really i think word of mouth like what about, and again, I think promotional product industry is big, but also, I mean, it is over $100 billion uh, globally, $109 yeah. billion to be exact. So it's, it's a really big market. I mean, if you think about like, some of the larger corporation, they're buying millions and millions of polo for their employees, uh, right? Or their uniforms or, you know, events. Uh, if you think about NFLs, they're buying yeah. millions and millions of dollars worth of product that they just give out of the games or like the, the telegatings or all the universities. So this industry, if you think about it, it's a, it's a big uh, uh, industry, but also there are very few people that control this industry. So it's really, you know, uh, I think, you know, 2080 rule, as you know, really the 20% own that 80% of the market. Uh, this is kind of mm. similar to that. So this industry is small and we are actually, because of built a really, uh, I would say, robust technology, which doesn't exist in this space, we are already able to get some of the biggest player in this space utilizing our technology because they know that, you so, know, either they got to have to utilize what we built or, you know, uh, they have to build themselves. So let us uh, know more about this, about this technology and the, also how this technology is helping to acquire a new customer. Absolutely. Again, I think so. There's a two parts to it. I mean, if I can just more, maybe go a little deeper yeah, into this, uh, uh, a little more yeah. deeper into this. Um, so I will maybe give you an example. Let's say 
let's give an example of the McDonald's. And again, this is a hypothetical example, right? Uh, let's say when McDonald's, they're buying 1 million polo shirts for all of their store managers, store workers that they have to have a uniform for. And every quarter or every two quarters that they'll be buying these uh, products. Currently, what they do, they will work with an uh, agency, uh, which is we call the promotional product agency. These are the companies. So McDonald's is like, hey, I'm not a fashion company. I have no idea how do you make this stuff. And we don't want to be in charge of doing that. So they will work with the agency to really procure this product for them. For McDonald's uh, marketing team, what is important for them is their color scheme to make sure the product matches exactly McDonald's primary color, secondary color, tertiary color, McDonald's logo, branding, all the things that they're looking for, that that polo has to be exactly like what they're looking for. It's not something they can just go to Vista Print mm. and just upload their logo and just order some. That's not how it, it would work. So this is kind of this promotional product agency. They will then curate, design, and do all of that. But this promotional product agency, they also have to work with multiple people. A lot of those guys, actually, they don't produce the product. So they work with cross-border agency. A lot of cases, they work with local decorators that can only print a logo on the shirt or embroidery a shirt. Then those companies have to work with the middleman we call a wholesaler. They only make blank polo shirts or blank t-shirt or blank hats. Then those blank hat company or wholesaler, they have to bring this from Vietnam, Bangladesh, China, or all over the world, curate these products. So if you just see this flow, there are already three to four people involved in this process to really for McDonald's to get this product source. And every person that's touching, uh, it's reducing the transparency and visibility for McDonald's, how they source their products. So what we built a technology that, hey, we built a marketplace. It's a two-sided marketplace. In one side, we have vetted and verified promotional product distributors that can post their project into our platform. On the other side, we have vetted and verified factories around the world. They are qualified to make some of the best polo shirts in the world and in a very cost-effective way by cutting all the middlemen. So, mm -hmm. you know, by matching those two, you know, in our technology also, we built in all the workflow. So it's not just, you know, I'm like, hey, Kasim, here's a factory, go ahead and done. It's like now Kasim gets to initiate a sample with the factory. And we have a in team on the ground that can curate the sample, make sure the sample get done within the requirements and get sent out to the agency that can ver verify that. Then all the cross-border payments, you know, if you're, we're not talking about sending only a few hundred bucks, a lot of cases we're sending hundreds of thousands of dollars in different countries. So making sure that we have the capabilities and, you know, uh, to sending all the money securely within those banks, all the logistic, doing, is, you know, uh, doing LC or, or T and all, all the payment processing. Yeah. We also have people on the ground that can do the quality checking when the production is happening. We can also have a workflow for you to track from sampling, production, approval process, all the communication, all the quality checking, all the verification, everything done in one. So that's that's really the one part yeah, of the technology cool. that we have built. Yeah. Obviously, that, that's the cool. that's thing for, for sure. And okay, so uh, what are your uh, short-term goals like in next three to six months? So um, our goals is really, you know, we want it to be the, you know, complete operating system for this entire promotional product gifting industry. Mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. the ordering to the kind of supply chain, uh, not just the one part. We feel like, you know, we have, we have a, you know, now that our design studio technology that we have built, now that's powering the front end of those, all those smaller promotional product and agency to really have a website that is fully configurable. Uh, what that means is now custom can come into any of these smaller distributors. They're like, okay, you can pick a color. You can pick a design of the hats. You can uh, now uh, pick, uh, upload your logos. You can even change the mesh change the fabrics. So, you know, what you do in a traditional cases of creating something we call it tech bag, which is a technical design for a garments, we actually digitize that in a very seamless and easy way for anybody to do that. So that's really the order taking platform that we have created. I think we want to pretty much right now in the US, we have 40,000 promotional distributors. I mean, my oh, goal is wait. to every single distributor is utilizing the technology we have built on the front end. Then the second part of it, uh, we want to curate factory from all over the world who are vetted, verified and sustainable and they have ethical practices and we're bringing them to really fulfill all the orders that coming to this technology. So that's really the goal for three to six, uh, you know, six, you said 
three to six years goals uh, or six months goals. All right, this makes completely sense. So uh, let us know uh, so what would be your biggest advice uh, for our audience? I think really the biggest takeaway uh you know i've been serial entrepreneur myself um you know exited multiple company and continue to build uh new businesses and really kind of at the grind right i think the biggest asset for me is the network uh the people who i surrounded myself i think you know i was able to surround myself with some of the mentors who has gone through has done this before right who has made those mistakes before so for me able to you know surround myself with those like minded people and have some you know people that have done that i think that has helped me negotiations continue to grow learn from my you know them and you know grow my business and continue to apply those knowledge in this i think that's that's really uh, one of, one of the biggest and again it's probably everybody gives that knowledge uh, or give that yeah. advice but i really think you know it is so true that your uh, your network is your net worth people you know, people you surround yourself, uh, that can really make a change uh, for you. And I think that has done for me. That's a great advice for sure. So uh, let us know uh, how people can reach you. You can share your website, your social media handles, or if there's any other way to reach you, go for it. Yes. So I think, you know, for anybody, the audience, uh, if they wanted to learn about my business, it is uh, dakai.com. So it's D-H-A-K-A-I.com. Uh, but again, also, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is russell at dakai.com. Again, I, I love receiving all the feedback, all the criticism, uh, how we can improve <laughs> our product better. Um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out. Happy to happy to connect. That's great. That's great. So I really enjoyed the discussion, enjoyed the discussion and uh, especially the part uh, where you are setting apart from your competitors and uh, you are doing really good, thing, good things. So. Oh, I, I also learned a lot of things in this in this podcast. So, so nice of you, Russell. Thanks for appearing today. Uh, it was a really nice discussion to you. And uh, have a good day. Bye. Thank you so much, Kasim. Again, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.